All right, welcome back. Let's just hop into Unemployed in Greenland. Uh, so we're going to be moving out of the caverns into the forest area. There's seven kind of distinct tile sets we have along the bottom, the fire caverns, the main caverns, and the ice caverns. Up here on the right are the mountains. In the middle are the, the forest levels. There's kind of a desert tile set to the left. And then that far upper left is the realm of the Mandatraki or Mandatraki. Not sure if I pronounce it right. But those are kind of the seven tile sets, seven lands, they call them. And each one you go into, it starts you with um, kind of some sort of opening panel or screenshot. That, like this image here is introducing us to the, the forest or the, the above ground land. There's actually some unused music that Eric Spear composed uh, included in the game. And I think it was meant to be used on these parts of the map. Uh, there's one called Beginnings of the Earth, which probably fits here. Um, but it could just be for unused levels as well. Anyways, um, let's begin the level. Alright, so right off the bat we have a new enemy. These are trolls, and they are pretty tough, and they also jump. So that's part of what makes them so tough. Spider. Okay, good. My money again. All right. So I didn't really talk about these uh, spiked balls in the first level, um, but we have them there too. These ones are just a little faster. Uh, they do quite a bit of damage, so it's good to avoid them. The best time is when they're behind you, because sometimes you can still get hit when they're in the, the foreground, I guess. Okay, so this is another branching level. Let's kill this troll really fast. As you can see, they can really jump quite a bit. Uh, we have a right branch and a left branch to open up two different directions. I'm going to go ahead and save. So we're now at the beginning of 6, actually. Let's go ahead and take the right side first. So we have another one of these guys. Come on down. I'm going this way because I want to get the new spell. There's a boomerang spell on this level. This guy is darker. Um, he's the same as the others, but... Uh, a little bit stronger. They, there's also some uh, bluish gray ones that will appear in the ice levels that are stronger than the other ones. Okay, there's a secret up here. So this is, uh, these particulates here are meant to show there's wind. You can just jump into it right along and it'll carry you up here. There's a level later that the whole level is you just navigate the air currents. So in a lot of ways, this level is just a, almost a tech demo of the things this engine can do. Because there's a lot of things. Here's another one, this mirror image power-up. It just is a character that lags behind for Azul, can draw fire, things like that. Not really useful in this level. I think there's a nice level maybe where it is. Again, I think it's funny that the bodies, you can just ride on them. Okay. Let's get all these icons. time this right, we're going to have to try to shoot a fireball into that cannon for when it is facing down. It's pretty fast, actually. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and regenerate here. All right, 
right, here we go. This is a new spell. So we already saw the stone spell a little bit. I don't use it as much. The fireball I've been using predominantly, it shoots in an arch like that. Um, this is the boomerang spell, and it shoots straight ahead. The nice thing about it is you can shoot as many as you want. As long as it doesn't hit anything, it comes back and gives you your magic back. So that's part of the reason that I, I shoot a lot is I usually use the boomerang spell, so it's very easy to get all your magic back. Uh, I also like the straight trajectory of it. Okay, we have to open that door by putting that rock there, otherwise it uh, will not stay depressed, like the previous button. Um, but no, I like that trajectory because it's a little easier to hit certain things. Okay, and there's actually uh, some Zycrons down here. I think even Erica in her guide missed the Zycrons down here, but there's some kind of behind that rock area. You might be able to hear me pick them up. Okay, I think I heard a couple clicks, so that is probably all of them. But yeah, in her guide, Erica wasn't able to get all the Zycrons in this mission, and I think it's because of the ones that were hidden back there. They are kind of hard to find. These little enemies are so annoying because you have to shoot all of them. But another use case for the boomerang spell, I guess. Alright, let's just take that across. You probably saw those boomerangs did some interesting turns. When you jump or duck or anything, they try to come back to you, and uh, you can actually use that to do some interesting things, like if there's an enemy behind a, a ledge you're trying to hit. Alright, let's save. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish up by exiting out the eastern side. We're not going to have finished everything. Almost half in a lot of things. But we'll open this eastern branch here. It takes us to Storm Valley and ultimately can lead up to the mountains. But let's go back and finish up the western half. So we have been here before. Okay, it's a little bit tricky that uh, this spiked ball here can be really hard to miss. Alright, let's deal with this guy. I have a feeling there's another. No, oh, maybe not. Okay, let's pick up the other Zycrons. Generation area. Don't really need it too much right now. All right. Now there's a lot of Zycrons to be picked up up here. So we have to follow some of these fading platforms. It can be hard to time that. Actually, I think, yeah, there's a high jump over here that we can use to our advantage. We can ride on this water geyser. High jump is a very useful power-up, so let's use it to Hmm. 
seem to be having difficulty with jumping up there. here. So let's use this save now. There's a lot of saves early on. It starts to get a little bit more sparse later. You know, just once I get a lot of boomerangs um, in the air, they can actually kind of come back and hit enemies from behind, which can be useful. I still want to get that last five round. There we go. Oh, another one. Okay. Yeah, see, they're kind of coming from all directions at that point. That's one of the things I like about this game that's pretty distinct from something like Mario Brothers. Because um, you, you have a fireball power up in that game, of course, but Frazzle is pretty much exclusively a magic based character. See, I, I much prefer uh, using Boomerang for this type of thing. I think that's everything here. Okay, so what we picked up was two rings. Uh, now we now have two smite rings, we've seen these before, you can just use them to hurt everything on the screen. And now we have an escape ring as well. Escape rings allow you to leave a level at any time. So if you're not near an exit and you just want to go back to the world screen, get a summary of where you're at right now, you can use them. There's a few uh, in the game. But you don't really need to use them, so they're kind of just for very specific circumstances. I'm actually going to leave this save. There's there's no point in using all of them. That is crumbling. Uh, we should be able to bypass that. Yeah. The one you have to time. I'm just going to bypass it. All right. So we should get 100% on uh, the uh, yeah, let's save. The secrets and Zycrons, we should get 100%. The enemy calculation is off on this level. Yeah, there we go. So, as I said, even Erica and her guide wasn't able to get all the Zycrons. I think it's because she missed the ones that were uh, in the water on the right path that I talked about. They're very hard to find. But, uh, okay, that's the end of Unemployed in Greenland. Kind of an entertaining introduction to the forest world. Uh, the left path took us to River of Fears, and the right path to Storm Valley uh, we'll probably pick up in River of Fears. 